Thank you, all 11 of you. Really cool. Um, this talk was scheduled somewhere today. Uh, and, uh, well, I'm really grateful to be here, actually. I think it's a great event. And uh, from where I stand, I would just like to thank all the sponsors and all the volunteers and everybody involved here. It's your, you guys and girls are doing a fantastic job. Um, all right, what am I going to talk about? Uh, Tale of cookies. And um, as much as I love to bake those things, we also have the electronic equivalent uh, of them. I could do some recipes afterwards if somebody's interested, actually. Uh, but who am I? Actually, that's me. That's my car. I have a, my own company uh, for 15 years by now. I've been doing a lot of stuff in open source with open source software, uh, basically a lot of web stuff, uh, workshops. Uh, but uh, I'm also business manager of Classical Choir, which basically is my philosophy. You should do anything you're interested in. And if you can make money from that, that's cool. And then you can continue doing that. Um, Drupal, actually this talk uh, is a bit focused on the integration of PWIC, the statistics tool, with the Drupal CMS, um, or CMF as they like to call it. Um, that's basically because that is my uh, content management framework of choice, and I use that as an uh, example, but PWIC is actually not Drupal uh, specific or anything. You can use it even with SharePoint sites if you want. Uh, that is if you want to use SharePoint anyway. But um, I've been doing a lot of Drupal-related uh, talks recently, and uh, this one is about cookies, as you have probably noticed. <laughs> um, in the Netherlands, we have had the cookie law since uh, 5th of June, and uh, basically it's not specifically uh, targeting cookies and stuff. It is. Uh, the telecommunication law, which basically describes which uh, pieces of information are regarded as personal information uh, and which level of personal information uh, is allowed to be stored in a certain format and also which measures you have to take to prevent uh, this information from leaking. Uh, but to focus on cookies, because it's a really handy uh, example and it hit the media pretty big, so um, there are in the law, right now, two types of cookies. You have functional cookies, which are, according to the law, a basic necessity. Uh, you may use these uh, and simply inform your users and simply carry on uh, using them. And there's the second part, there's analytics uh, cookies. Um, this is quite a technical challenge because most systems use one type of cookie for both uh, uh, ends, and that is pretty hard to split up. But uh, the assumption uh, in the law is that analytics cookies will contain or link to personally identifiable information. And uh, the law actually is that as a webmaster or website owner, you are responsible for that data. So it's actually your uh, data to work with. Um, functional cookies are uh, legal as long as you inform a user and analytics cookies you have to actually ask permission for uh, before you can even use them. Well, that is something hardly anybody does, but that is actually the law. Um, it became annoying and this is also a bit annoying since my slide is being prevented by a cookie wall, uh, which helps. But uh, like I said, it, it is quite hard in a system to actually uh, make the distinction between a functional cookie or an analytics cookie. Because what is analytics? Is analytics also uh, page counting? Is analytics also uh, the, 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 the breadcrumb trail following of your user, anything at all? It, it could be a very functional use case to uh, use one uh, type of cookie for uh, both ends. In the Netherlands, uh, we had also an interesting um, situation where we have the public broadcasting services, the MPO. Um, of course, they have to comply with the law, uh, so they have to comply with the cookie, wall, uh, cookie law, um, but also they are uh, required by law to give information about the actual visitors their website attracts. So here you have uh, legislation which 
makes them uh, register analytics, but the other legislation demands that they actually uh, ask for permission before doing anything like that. Okay, they simply solved it. They put a cookie wall in front of the entire uh, site and you could not use the public broadcast website if you did not comply uh, or at least accept that. And that's um, yeah, the most extreme example, uh, but you can see the difficulty between the uh, public information providing uh, and the uh, fact uh, that you should ask for uh, permission. But basically any web shop or anybody who owned the website in the Netherlands was, if you read the law, literally almost required to do that, which became really unusable. All right, and then we've got a new concept, which is called penalties, of course, because if you have legislation, you want to have some kind of control over it and you want to have some kind of way of enforcing it. Uh, well, the prevent uh, prevention measures, uh, you have to have a cookie policy, privacy policy, stuff like that. And actually, uh, data loss, you have to inform your users about them. Uh, so now we have this public naming and shaming theme, which is basically the, the penalty. So there is no, at this time, no financial penalty if you do not comply uh, to the law. Um, but it, it's basically in the EU, uh, EU right now, it's a legal minefield because every uh, separate country has implemented different uh, rule sets, which is fantastic as a web developer, as you understand, because websites are usually confined to one country, right? Uh, no. All uh, right. Then we added some more. We introduced here in the Netherlands the beautiful concept of first party and third party cookies. This actually, I think, makes sense. And we now have the situation where uh, the first party cookie is being considered as, well, uh, information is contained within one side and as long as you keep it to yourself, you can inform your users for both types of usage, so the functional and the analytics, as long as you do it from your own server, host your own uh, services for that, you're pretty much okay. Um, the idea also behind that is uh, that uh, there is a general concern within uh, the uh, Dutch government, but also the EU in broader sense, that information is leaking to uh, other areas in the world and actually uh, analytics software is a fantastic uh, uh, tool to uh, spread these data. So uh, we now have first party and third party cookies. Um, it's also uh, the OPTA, which in the Netherlands is the controlling authority for uh, telecommunication law. Um, they have uh, introduced a cookie uh, fuck, uh, frequently asked questions about the usage, um, which also introduced another concept, namely you can use also uh, statically logged server logs without user consent. I'm going to get into that a bit later because the PWIC software, the alternative software uh, I'll be talking about later, will integrate that too. Um, but it's a bit hazy because Opta states that uh, any information sent after the initial request uh, must also uh, comply to the law, which is interesting, uh, not only because HTTP is stateless, but what is an initial uh, request anyway. All right. Uh, browser fingerprinting, that's also a little bit of a minefield because the cookie fuck doesn't state too much about it, but it's also a very nice way of identifying uh, 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 individual users. Um, actually, the only cookie that you can absolutely use is the cookie to indicate no cookies may be used, which are a lot of cookies. Uh, but also, that has a pretty narrow uh, use case because you can almost use uh, some some smart people actually implemented the cookie blocking cookie as having a uh, UID, so that they could per user uh, block cookies in their profile, which kind of defies the whole concept of making it non-personally be uh, followable. So if you do a no cookies cookie, it should only do like block cookies, yes or no. 
in the bigger picture, um, in the EU, there is much concern, and, and this also has been in a greatly uh, improved, this concern, by recent uh, publications about this like minor data mining thing. I think it was called PRISM, maybe somebody knows or heard about that, I think most people in the world did. Uh, but there is a very philosophical discussion going on in the EU at the moment, and I like the title of a couple of reports. It's about the right to be forgotten. And it's actually about how much uh, influence can you give an individual over the data he or she is spreading around uh, in the world. Um, of course, there is a limit to the controllability, but the idea that uh, it is uh, at a European level being discussed how to handle uh, an like universal opt-out, I think it's a very good uh, step. Uh, also, uh, the EU is also very uh, concerned about the fact that a lot of data uh, is stored outside of the uh, EU's. And yeah, it's also from a business point of view, what we've basically been doing in the EU is like handing just about anything we have uh, over to like Google and some other companies, which are basically not uh, European-based. Uh, so there's talk about European clouds, European infrastructure. It is actually pretty interesting. Uh, but let's get back to the smaller picture, because that is better explainable. All right. I use Google Analytics. Um, I used to do. And, but, um, and actually, clients of mine uh, ask for Google Analytics. They simply have this whole concept that the only email is Gmail, the only uh, statistics tool is Google Analytics, uh, so they ask for a product. And this is pretty uh, annoying, actually, because now you have to go back to the client and like explain, all right, we have legislation, and I'm sorry, I'm just a website designer or developer, and but I now have to put a disclaimer on your website, which you don't want lot of confusing and annoying information, uh, but clients can simply say, screw that, put in Google Analytics, I'm fine with that. All right. Um, at first, I didn't, I wasn't really interested, uh, so I said, basically, all right, here we go, we're just going to implement Google Analytics and fine by me. Then I actually looked in the uh, use case scenarios, because while Google Analytics is an absolutely fantastic tool, it also has limitations. And um, one limitation, for instance, is uh, if you have corporate intranets uh, running locally, you might want to restrict uh, the amount of traffic uh, an internally hosted intranet is using. Uh, and if you want to connect that to Google Analytics, that, that's kind of not helping that. Um, so for intranets, you can pretty much use uh, internal software. And I started researching uh, other use cases as well. Um, also, because Google is pretty transparent about exit strategies. You can simply uh, have the Google API exporting just about anything. But still, um, why not look at an open source perspective? What is there? All right, introducing PeeWick. Um, Actually, it's born out of the ashes of PHP uh, My Visits. I don't know if anybody in here actually heard of that or has ever used it. It was horrendous, uh, in my uh, humble opinion. And uh, they did a very nice job re-implementing it. Uh, it's built using Zen Framework, all kind of normal architectural tools in uh, the PHP world nowadays. It integrates really well with uh, all common CMSs. Uh, it's actually really user-friendly. I will do a little demo uh, later on, and it has a really nice concept of dragging and dropping reports. It's, it looks also quite similar to uh, Google Analytics, for that matter. Um, but most importantly, it stores your data on your own server. It's first party, and you can actually control it. And the best part is it's all stored in a MySQL database, so you can hook up a different kind of reporting engine, like Jasper reports or something like that to generate other uh, reports. That's, I think it's actually quite nice. Well, 
uh, AW stats, famous tool in the web hosting uh, business. Uh, it's uh, the best part from Pwik is actually that it's using cookies to make uh, unique, identifiable users, while AW stats uses IP addresses. And if you have uh, like a corporate customer which runs in a proxy server, you basically have no idea what they're doing. And with Pwik, actually, you do. Uh, it it does click paths. Um, it's it actually has all the goodies. Uh, also with e-commerce integration, you can do campaigns. You can uh, have custom variables added in your uh, statistics. So, uh, but also really cool is the fact that it actually can also parse server logs. So you can offer the opt-out to uh, your users, and still by importing server logs you can still have a global picture about what actually this user is doing. So it's like combining the best of Google Analytics with uh, the hard evidence of AW stats. Um, it also has, uh, is, it was really developed with the current legislation in mind. So from uh, the beginning there are, have been options like anonymized IP addresses, automatic purging of the data, and uh, it's actually uh, from the start has uh, honored the do not track option, which basically nobody uses, but it's still there. And it's nice that somebody honors it. Uh, for the site managers, um, it offers a lot of functionality which a user can actually uh, configure themselves, which is nice, I can assure you. Uh, and I will show it a bit later. Are there alternatives? Yep, there are. Uh, we have uh, like open web analytics. Uh, it's also a web-based tool. It's also PHP-based. It's a bit older uh, than Pwik, um, but it's not that much uh, developed from the uh, legislation perspective. Uh, so uh, then you have CrawlTrack, which is a really interesting thing because it actually claims to be uh, like whole uh, site security and analytics platform. It claims it can prevent hacks and do stuff like that. It's, I really don't know if I want my analytics tool to have any kind of security uh, device. I, I prefer mod security for that uh, reason, actually. But OK, we have crawl tracks. And then we have, of course, AW stats, webalizers, uh, W3Pearl. Uh, they are all. Uh, yeah, local software running on the server, and uh, I think that probably Apollo 11 had a more intuitive interface than uh, most of the tools uh, here. Drupal integration. Uh, there's a module for that, of course. Um, the integration part is really simple. You enable the module. Actually, that's the same for also Joomla and WordPress. So a little snippet of JavaScript is being inserted in, into your theme. You only have to point the module to your uh, server implementation. Uh, so it's not harder uh, to uh, implement than Google Analytics or any other uh, analytics tool. Um, the integration with Drupal is really nice. You get reports from Pwik in your administration uh, uh, interface in Drupal. So your uh, site editors have the reports from Pwik at their fingertips when they're working with uh, the platform, which comes really uh, in handy because if they want to do like a keyword search engine keyword comparison, they don't have to leave the content management platform to get the information. They can get it directly there. Um, you still need some uh, module in Drupal like uh, cookie control to inform the user or ask for permission. That's something that Pwik model does not do. but uh, basically, it does a lot. In the Drupal uh, module, I'm not sure what's happening now. Still here? Yeah, all right. I haven't been electrocuted, so I guess it's OK. Um, inside Drupal, you have all the standard uh, reports, visitors, the trends, uh, the click paths your user is following. Uh, and you can uh, also. Uh, define actions uh, which you want to follow uh, for the user, like entry and exit pages, which is really useful if you have an e-commerce site, of course, because you want to see how a user gets onto your site and how the user is searching or looking in your site and what paths it's following. Um, 
but I think it's about time to maybe do a little, uh, show a little demoing here, so I'm just gonna do that. And I think it was already here. Yep, it is. Uh, I'm not sure if it's visible, actually. And if I could request a little assistance on this particular matter, then that would be really nice. Mm, nope. It's, uh, I think we have to opt in to see it here. Uh, nope, not yet. Uh, everybody has a tablet or a laptop, maybe in themselves. Uh, maybe you guys can. Go, oh, you're you're all right. Oh, okay, something is. Uh, all right, which means I have to. I don't know how to do this. Okay, um, this is what Pbic looks like when you open the demo site, demo.pbic.org. It uses tiles to uh, offer the different reports. Uh, visitors map, uh, visitor browser, if uh, it what you may uh, do now is grab a tile and drag it across the screen just to show that that basically works. Um, the best part is that this can actually be done by the user themselves. The administrator does not have to configure anything. Users can input their own filters like uh, time periods. They can select everything themselves. Um, and it's pretty intuitive. It's um, uh, all right. Also, uh, it has the possibility of adding more reports here, so a user can combine his or her own dashboard and also have this dash dashboard emailed to them uh, on regular basis and intervals. So this, this actually is pretty nifty. Um, and uh, as you can see, it looks pretty recognizable. Yeah, let's go back to the presentation because uh, uh, demo.pwig.org. Have a look at it. It's it's really nice. Well, let's see if we can get the presentation back. Uh, also, the good part, uh, another good part is that it has a lot of uh, migration uh, scripts. So there are automated migration tools from Google Analytics to import data into Pwig. Uh, if you use other types of uh, uh, statistics software, then you can. Uh, oh, here, we're back. Uh, you can also import this data, so but you you don't have to lose anything. You can just get on. Ah, right. Cool. Thanks. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, you can do log file imports. Is this something I am doing, or I hope not? I will remain really still. Um, but uh, actually, you should just, I think, start and try it. All right. Um, sad that demo is not running really well, but uh, do you have any questions, perhaps? I see a hand there. Yeah. Uh, you can do that. Uh, the, the question was, is there integration with Google AdWords uh, or, or other platforms like that? Um, not out of the box, but you can use custom variables. So in your campaigns, you in the URLs that you are using to click from the ads to your website, you can embed uh, variables, which will be picked up by PWIC and then shown as different reports. So yes, you can do that. Uh, out of the box, it is all, uh, tracking, uh, of course, refers. So you can see uh, that a user has come from a certain campaign. Uh, so that, that is doable. Uh, but if you want to have more fine-grained uh, result, you can use custom variables. Uh, but out of the box, refer mapping is done. So you can use that. Is that good enough? OK. Here. Actually, I have two questions. First oh of dear. all, how easy is it to set up this PBIC? And uh, would it be 
hard, would it be hard to implement abandoned carts in shopping uh, systems? Which is fairly interesting since a lot of people, they already, you know, their email addresses and they actually were about to buy something, but you can't make up why they didn't. You can uh, use, uh, to answer the last question first, um, you can use the uh, click paths user has followed and you can see where the user exits or where the user stops uh, interacting with your site. So you can use that to uh, implement uh, abandoned shopping carts. Myself, I prefer using the commerce platform itself for that. And since I use Drupal Commerce mostly, uh, I can simply make a report in Drupal Commerce showing all abandoned shopping carts. Uh, and that's in views like a 10 minute uh, exercise. But PWIC actually has that. So you can use entry and exit pages. Sorry. In, in commerce, you can use Giraffe, which does this for you. Okay. But then you're implementing a third-party service and thus a third-party cookie. I'm not implementing anything okay. in Drupal Commerce. I'm actually using a Drupal views to simply make a report of shopping carts that have not reached the checkout status, which is more uh, easy and you don't have to implement a third-party solution for that. Um, is that an, uh, for that question? All right, then the first question, how easy is it to install? Well. It is simply a PHP MySQL application. So it's it's simply unzipping, uh, installing a database, and the basic installation is just about as intuitive as a basic WordPress or, or, or Drupal uh, implementation. So uh, it also runs on shared hosting. Uh, it's it's really uh, performance-wise really slick because it does asynchronous uh, indexing. Uh, hits are stored in a local uh, log file, which is then parsed every m couple of minutes and indexed in the database, so your user will not notice any kind of, uh, of, of delay. Um, so installation is pretty simple. Also, uh, if you want to use features like log file imports, then you have to configure a cron job for that on the system itself. But uh, as long as you use the basic web analytics uh, stuff, you can simply install it in your web root, uh, install the MySQL database, and it runs Beautifully. All right. Uh, any other questions over there? Coming. I thought that the cookie um, uh, law in the Netherlands was withdrawn or partly withdrawn. Can you elaborate on that? The cookie law in the Netherlands is still in effect. Uh, there have been a couple of really confusing signals uh, given by the government. There is actually. There was a letter from Minister uh, Kamp uh, from December which introduced the concept of first party and third party cookies and which also mentioned that the law would be rewritten uh, somewhere soon. Uh, as of today, there is actual work being done on rewriting the law to make it a little less brain dead, um, but still it is in effect the way it is uh, and which basically means it's pretty much unimplementable. Yeah, all right. Anybody else, perhaps, or please? I'm missing anything? No. All right. Okay. Then uh, you have a question. All right, cool. So now you have some more time to think you of more questions. You talked about the very tight integration between this tool and Drupal. How does it integrate with other uh, CMSs? Uh, it is a platform by itself. It has is it is not exactly uh, integrated with any system uh, other than there are plugins and modules for other systems to uh, consume the APIs from uh, PWIC. So it integrates well with Drupal, but also with WordPress, uh, also uh, with with Joomla. I'm actually doing a SharePoint. Uh, integration uh, at the moment f uh, with PWIC. So it's, uh, it has, the, the organization itself has nothing to do with Drupal. Uh, I chose Drupal as the, as my own content management system of choice uh, and to at least uh, to tell you about the level of integration uh, that is possible. But it works with all major uh, CMS. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? No? Uh all right, on that note, then I'll say thank you to Hans de Rath, and uh, let's have a round of applause for him. Thanks for staying.